Hello, welcome, welcome back to my channel and here I am with another tutorial. On this uh, tutorial, I will show you a uh, five different ways how you can sew a piping. Yes, five different ways. Maybe you only know one of them, maybe you know all of them. For those who only know one, uh, you will have a uh, four different way how you can put a pipe into the cushion, to the pillow, to the seat. Yes, it requires a uh, skill or practice for some of them, but don't worry, I will show you how you can do them on this video. The pressure foot that I will use it is this one. It's one quarter. Why one quarter? Because the vinyl is heavy. Sometimes, most of the time when the vinyl is not heavy and when I use fabric, I use one A to sew a piping. I am not going to show you the whole process. This is the example number one. First, you're going to cut the wall cord. The wall cord can be inch and a quarter or inch and one A. Most of the time, I cut it at inch and one A. You can see them right there. It's a heavy vinyl. And I will use this kind of piping. It's 1A. It's empty on the center. You can see I can put a posture pin in there. So I always use this on seat, on boat, on motorcycle seat. On furniture, I use other kind of piping. And a lot of people do it this way. They get the piping, they wrap it with vinyl, and they put one stitch. I don't use this technique anymore. It requires too much time. But it will work for you, so uh, keep doing it. I don't recommend you to do this anymore. Of course, there are some exceptions. Uh, then I start sewing the pipe into the, let's say this is a cushion, this is a armrest, this is a pillow, anywhere that require piping. Before to uh, end of that corner, I cut it because it's easy to uh, work with the piping on that corner then you can see I keep sewing then there is a notch you can see it I mark the notch then I will cut it half inch away from that notch see then I, I split same thing right here but check this out I recommend you to do this if you are using vinyl cut it this way sideways taper and then you go like this overlay and cut it even the piping and then you will sew it and making sure to make a nice finish in there this is the stitch number one number two now let's say this is a pattern cushion let's say this is an armrest this is a pillow and I'm going to close that piece this is the stitch number three. Stitch number three. And on the corner, I always put the needle inside, then I twist the material. Check in there. I will let the needle inside and move the material and keep sewing. Then I will stop like three inches before that mark. And I will cut it. I see where the marker is. I put a mark on it. Half inch extra for the seam allowance. Same thing right here. Okay, then I will sew those pieces together. For a lot of people, this is not new. This is nothing new. This is the standard process. A lot of people do this. They put the pipe in this way. Okay, and you can open it like this, or you can cut it close to the stitch, whatever you prefer. Okay, making sure, split them on the bottom, and there it is. This is the example number one how you can sew a piping. You can cut them on the corner. I recommend you when you are using a heavy vinyl, do it this way. Cut them on the corner. If you are using fabric or light vinyl, don't cut it. And there is example number one. How many stitch did I put to sew the, those three, uh, three pieces? Three stitches. I sew it three times all around. 
to make it look like that. Okay, this will be the example number two. Three quarter of an inch. I just draw a line three quarter of an inch from the edge of that binder. For a lot of you, maybe this it is total new. Maybe this will be hard for you at the beginning. The first time that you try it, maybe it will take you longer. But believe me, if you practice this, this is a good uh, choice. How you can sew a piping. One stitch and I am sewing a piping. I left the needle inside, half inch before that corner and keep working around with that material. See? Let the needle inside, move it. This vinyl is heavy. The heavy it is, hard it will be. But if you are using fabric, if you are using a lightweight vinyl, that will be so easy to do this. See? I draw a line, line, three quarter of an inch. You can see the mark and I am folding in there, then I am sewing. One stitch. For production, for a simple uh, cushion, this is the way how you can do it. I just mark it, and I will cut it half inch away from, away from that mark. So simple this way. But if you never try before, you will say, Oh, this is too hard for me. I stay with the example number one. Why? Because you never try it this way. But as soon as you try it, as soon as you practice and keep practicing, keep practicing, you will find, you will see it. Oh, this is so faster than the example number one. There are a lot of jobs that you can apply this technique. A lot of jobs. But some of them you can apply this technique. I cut the thread, then I will make a knot on the bottom. That way it doesn't come in undone. Sample number two. How many stitches do I put to sew this piping all around? One stitch. And like those corners. There is one thing you can see the stitch from outside. That's the only thing. And there is one way. This is the example number three. First, I will sew that piece that are going to be around together. H how do I know that is the side? Because I measured it. The piping that I will use it is ready made. You can buy this kind of piping any color you want. And I will use a clear plastic. Why clear plastic? Because both ends of that piping will meet in there. That's what I put in a clear plastic. If it, uh, the end doesn't meet together, I don't use a clear plastic. So I start sewing that piping. So easy to work with it because it is ready made and it is faster. This is another way how you can put a pipe. So I just make sure those pieces meet together in there. I get the plastic and wrap it, the piping. I can use black, ready-made piping, white, ready-made piping. Don't pay attention to the color. This is just an example because maybe you will say, why do you use a, a <coughs> gray uh, ready-made piping when you are working with a white vinyl? Don't pay attention to that. that this is just an example. So and I start sewing that pipe into there, all around. I stop half inch before the end of that corner, let the needle inside, and I keep sewing. And there it is. This is the example number three. How many stitches did I put to make it look like that? Two stitches. It looks beautiful, but to be honest, I don't like to uh, use a ready-made piping. I prefer make it out of vinyl, out of leather, any color that the rest of the seat will be, or any color that the customer pick. This is the example number four. I use this technique to sew a piping a lot. Maybe I don't show you on, on videos, 
but I use on my Spanish YouTube channel, I have uh, five videos re related to this process. My friend, I recommend you to try this ways. I know, I am pretty sure the first time that you try will take you longer than the way you used to, but don't worry about it. Keep practicing, keep practice. You will get it how to do it. You will get that skill. And then if you are working for production, you will see that big difference when you are using this technique. So this it is new for you. A lot of people who do furniture, they work for production, they use this technique. I get the both end of the vinyl that will be all around and sew it together. Here is the thing, check this out. Very important, I get the piping, I get the Velcro, wrap the uh, piping with the Velcro and put it three quarter of an inch from that mark. And I will start sewing three pieces together with one stitch. Maybe this is new for you, but right here it doesn't require that max experience you might ask him why because it is a straight piece i get to the corner let the needle inside twist it and keep sewing when it will require a skill or experience when you are using this technique in a headrest in an armrest or in a backrest or bottom cushion they will require experience or techniques but how you will be to that point, practice it. That's the only way how you will get experience, practice it. When you practice it, my friend, and you try in this way, you will see how easy it is. And maybe you will say, oh, that guy, Mecca, he was right about this technique. It is so simple and easy. And maybe you are not going to go back to the old style. In my Spanish YouTube channel, I have video related to this process. See, and I finish right there. Cut the corner because it is a heavy vinyl, and you can see it. I let that end of the corner. So simple and easy. One stitch, three pieces. Compared to the first example, I put three stitches to make it look like that. This is the example number one, number five. This it is not that much different from the sample number one. The only difference right here, I am putting the pipe into the piece that I will be all around. And the example number one, I saw that piping and I put it to the top piece. You can put both ends of the welcore on the center. I just leave it on the corner. This is just an example, not a big deal. See, I leave it on the corner. Then I saw both corners together. Uh, there will be kind of bumping in there, but this is just an example. Example, simple as that, see it that way. This is not a real job, it's just to show you. Okay, I start from the corner, right here. I shoot to let the needle inside on the corner before you uh, work around with the bind. Always, always. Let the needle inside and keep sewing. So simple, it had a, uh, piping already and I cut it like a half inch before to the end of the corner and twist it and keep sewing. A lot of people use example number one and sample number five when they sew a piping. A lot. That's the standard method that they use. And I always cut it right here corner and you can see them right there. and there it is. You can let the end of the uh, welcome on the center. I just leave it on the corner like I said before. This is just an example. And my friend, you just saw a five different way how you can put a piping. You can apply this technique to anywhere that requires a piping. The auction number one or the example number one, I don't use it anymore. And you might ask me, when was the last time that you used it, that technique? It was like around 40 years ago. I used to do it that way, like the example number one. Why I not use it anymore? Because it requires too much time. Imagine to put a welcome in a cover, any cover, bottom cushion, backrest, cushion, you have to sew that piping first to the welcome, so in making the welcome. Then you have to get that welcome and put it to the face of the backrest, 
or to the outside pieces. There you will have two stitches. And then to put those pieces together, you will have three stitches. Imagine you are making 20 cover. You are wasting thread. You are wasting time and things like that. That's what I don't recommend you to use that way. But you might say to me, hey, Mecca, when I start sewing a pipe and I start doing like the sample number one, and the sample number four and number five are too hard for me. I will put it this way, if you are one of them. Imagine, first time that you saw a piping, learning that process, you will start like the sample number four and like the sample number five. You stick like that for five years, sewing a piping like that. Five years later, you try to do or to sew a piping like the sample number one. What do you think it would be your reaction? Oh, I grew up doing like the sample number four and number five, and to me are so easy. Now I try to do it like the sample number one, and it is too hard for me. Sure, it will be too hard. Why? Because you didn't grow up doing that way. But remember this. If you practice, you will get a skill. If you practice, you will get experience. If you have experience, every job that you make, no matter how hard it is it will be, you will make it look easier.